This segment is brought to you by Shutterstock. I've been looking over here at this. I want to know what that is. This is my itty bitty Fitbit. See, it says, let's go. Hi, snubs. How you doing? How do you get it to do that? So you got to just set it down for a little while. And then eventually when you pick it up after it's been a while, it says like, let's go or vamanos or hurry, pick it up, pick up the pace. And then it says, hi, snubs. It. Yeah, it'll tell you your carbs, how many steps you've been taking, how many miles you've been going how many calories you've actually burned throughout, throughout the day. So um, the reason why I brought this with me is because when you go out at night in Vegas, you're partying a lot. And when you're at these conventions, you eat a lot of crazy food, like you know, chocolate throughout the day and candy, pretty much whatever you find and whatever's cheapest in the convention hall. And I was a little bit, I had a couple of issues like last year, just coming home you know, five pounds heavier because I was drinking beer all day and I was you know eating little Debbie snack cakes instead of a decent meal so I just started tracking everything with this little Fitbit and it turns out that I've been definitely been eating way too much and drinking quite a few more beers than I should <laughs> well it sounds like a quite a pedantic pedometer how does it know what you're eating and all of those other things you can track it so I have this little application and I can log in here and show it to you so this is my application, and whenever you run through here, you can see <laughs> my weight. You can see how many steps you've been taking. So I've taken at least 6,000 steps today. How many stairs you've climbed. I haven't climbed any, actually, because this place is all on the same level except for the South Hall. And then you can also see, uh, let's see, which one is this? Your calories burned for the day, so I've done pretty well. Your BMI, your weight and all sorts of other information. And it will sync with this via uh, Bluetooth Smart. So every time you put them close to each other and you press the resync button, it just syncs all the information from the pedometer and then you can plug in your food intake and everything that you've eaten throughout the day here and that'll sync back to the Fitbit. Okay, so you do have to be good about actually plugging stuff into yeah. the application. Yeah, but to be honest, like when you actually carry this around and when you're following your footsteps and when you are more interested in you know, covering this type of tool, it definitely makes sense to actually track it. And since they have this application, I've I've just, I, I don't know, I kind of did it whenever I was walking up, to, uh, up and down the stairs or whenever I'm on an elevator or whatever. So I just do it now and then, and it takes like two seconds. You know what I found, uh, and this is, you didn't tune in to Hack5 for Fitness, but I will say technology related, um, Wolfram Alpha, you just, uh, I was gonna say you Google something on Wolfram Alpha. Wow, that's horrible. Uh, you search for something on Wolfram Alpha, like, you know, a banana, and it's gonna tell you like all of the pot potassium and all the other stuff uh, about whatever that, that is. That's crazy, huh? Well, luckily with the Fitbit application, I've been able to just plug in like little Debbie snap cake, and it tells me, you know, 300 calories, because it already has all the information for me right there. So I don't have to go on Wolfram Alpha. Huh. Does, it, does it track the radiation of your, uh, of your, uh, bananas, though? No. Because uh, I'm just saying, bananas are radioactive. All right, anyway, uh, <laughs> cool. All right, well, hey, uh, let me t show you my app. Okay. All right, so get this. Uh, I had this idea actually a while ago. I had this idea at DEF CON, and I finally got around to implementing this. Because everyone, uh, the, the idea being, I don't need to be connected to the network competing for that resource uh, all of the time because I'm not necessarily sending and receiving messages all of the time and that's really all my phone is good for at a conference is just communicating by text right well uh, so I just don't want to play this game at all what I want to do is kind of like have a periscope where I can just like get on the network get anything that's in the queue send anything that's in the queue and get off the network the longer that I'm not connected to the network the longer my battery will last because I'm not competing with everybody else I just imagined you like popping your head out of the water and going Ooh, oh, Spectrum, okay, we're good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's seriously like being in a cell phone fallout shelter and just like <laughs> popping your head up to see any other survivors because you know, otherwise your, your phone's going. What's that, Billy? Spectrum? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so here's what I've done here. Um, our, people have been sending me messages for ages to check out the Android app called Tasker. And I finally, it was actually, as I was waiting to get into the previous press event last night, that I was just standing there for like 10 minutes and I was like, okay, I'm gonna download this, figure it out because that's a thing where I can automate. Tasker is kind of like automator for, uh, for OS X. The idea is 
here we go. Here's one of my tasks. This is my task where I can take a breath of air or whatever, my, my Periscope Up app. And all it does is within this, I can set these different contexts. Like the context here is if the battery level is under 50, is between zero and 51%, run this program. And this program is really simple. What it does is, uh, is to disable auto brightness, to uh, set my brightness level to zero, I've even configured it to work with a plugin. I've got this plugin. Um, what is it called? Called um, Screen Filter. I love Screen Filter. It's the coolest. Anyway, it uses that to dim the screen even more. So it's like a. It has if this then that kind of built in. Basically, it's the same kind of. And you know what? I love if this then that because it kind of brings programming paradigms to people that you know are like social media people but not programming people. Uh, and this is one of those things where if you're not a programming person, you're uh, you could do some really cool automation stuff with your Android phone and never even know that you're the, you know a programmer. Uh, the really cool thing is it's all super sequential. There's no object oriented stuff. You remember that from like Java classes. It's so. Oh God, do I remember? <laughs> well. Here's where, where the fun stuff happens. Basically, all I do is go into air, set airplane mode to on, and then uh, what do I do? close that, um, and then wait five minutes. Whoops. Uh, well, I did not mean to move that down there. Anyway, I wait five minutes, and then I turn airplane mode off, and then I wait a minute and 30 seconds, a, a long enough for me to connect to the network, send any message that's in my Google Talk queue, receive any message that the network has for me, uh, and then basically a loop. It just goes to number four. That's awesome. That's very cool. I could totally use this on my own phone. Yeah, and it's been working out really great. I'm actually super surprised. If I, uh, if I take a look at you know, battery usage, it's, it has been a nightmare at this conference. Yeah, I remember last night you were like, uh, my phone didn't charge. Can I borrow your battery? Uh, I'm at zero. Look at that. That is insane. That's, that's CES for you. That's a day and five hours. Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, I just thought I would share that. Um, I don't know what the equivalent is on iOS, so if you do know. And I will say that uh, while Tasker is really cool, not all of the cool functions that you might want to be able to do are uh, available unless you're rooted. Like I would love to have it be able to reboot my phone, uh, change my CPU clock cycles. I really wanted it to like underclock my phone and stuff. Uh, you can't do those if you're not rooted. So I guess I'm going to have to get around to rooting this device, but uh, just thought I'd throw that out there. So everybody that's emailed me to check out Tasker, it's the coolest thing in the world. Okay, now I realize what you're talking about. This is the coolest thing in the world. I can't wait to keep making more Tasker programs. And so if you've got a favorite Tasker program, be sure to hit us up, feedback at hack5.org, uh, or whatever your tips are for surviving a signal-to-noise-rich environment. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Darren. That's really, really cool. And I'm going to go play with my Fitbit and go eat a pretzel. We'll be back right after this. Shutterstock.com is the place to go when looking for stock photos, vectors, illustrations, and video clips. You can sign up for a large image pack, monthly subscriptions, or just grab a single image for a blog or mock-up. They even offer enhanced license access in case you want to print an image out or get it screened on a tee. Shutterstock.com makes it easy to curate your own galleries to make searching easier and you can download any image at any size all for one price. No nickel and diming for high res stuff. Head to Shutterstock.com or install their iPad app to get started. No credit card needed. When you find the images you want to use, use the offer code HAK1 to get 30% off any package. Well, that just about wraps up this episode of Hack 5. Uh, we'll be back in studio next week with the regular yeah, trivia and all the other stuff, right? Yeah, and speaking of which, it's almost the end of the season, so we should definitely have a party at the beginning of season 13. So stay tuned on all of the social networks, the Google Pluses, the Twitters, the Facebooks, uh, hack5.org slash follow to find all of the ways to subscribe there and get in on whatever our meetup shall be, but it will be probably most likely in the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, yes, and we'll link to it on all of the Twitter spheres, Google Pluses, and all that stuff. And also, don't don't forget to support us by go over, going over to hackshop.com. That's where you can find all of the cool products that we sell. 
I'm actually really, really tired of products. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. I kind of have a product CES hangover. <laughs> Although we'll be back in two and I want to start playing with Uber Tooth on Pineapple. That should be really good stuff. I huh? want to start playing with those cat ears that I played with the other day. Those were all really right. fun. <laughs> well, anyway, with all of that, uh, we value your feedback. Feedback at hack5.org. And uh, let us know what you think. And we will see you guys next week back in the studio. So until then, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust, Trust your technolist. Your technolist. And a three, four, five. Do 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 do. Boop 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 boop.